WMDN's The Educators. I'm your host, Kobe Colson. I'm sitting here with Dr. Sean B. Israel, and we're talking uh, here about <clears throat> his latest book, uh, The Cleopatra Teaching Rules. And, you know, the first thing, uh, Dr. Israel, you know, when I thought about this book, right. um, is I thought about, you know, why Cleopatra? You know, you think about how to connect, you know, Cleopatra with teaching, you know, and, and for the average person mm -hmm. walking through, you know, it's kind of difficult. They don't see the connection. So um, I guess my first question is why Cleopatra and, and how could you possibly connect her, you know, to a book about teaching? Right. I get that question a lot because uh, at first glance, people don't see the connection. And I really didn't see the connection at first because uh, I stumbled over, uh, you know, I've, I've had, you know, I've, I've known about Cleopatra, you know, in high school and, mm -hmm. you know, when we going over, you know, in history class and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I was writing a book a couple of years ago, uh, my book, The Warrior Principle, which, you know, you are familiar with. Yes. Yes, indeed. Great book. And um, oh, while I was doing the research for this particular book, because I was trying to. Uh, research ancient war war heroes mm -hmm. and I was connecting uh, the principles ancient war war principles to effective uh, you know principalship to effective principles for leading a school right. and so I came across Cleopatra's name during this time and I got into her story uh, uh, really deeply and her story captivated me and from how, you know, she ruled Egypt from, you know, at age 18 to, I guess, around age 32 when she uh, when she passed away. Right. But in reading her story, I was I was fascinated by certain principles that she used in order to to rule her country. Mm -hmm. And so an idea just clicked with me. And I want to take some of those principles that she used mm -hmm. and connect them with effective teaching and. Once you get into it and you get you get to reading the book, you get to see how I make those various connections and how, you know, teachers can can learn from her story. But I want to say this. The book is about effective teaching uh, practices, ways that teachers can engage students and uh, foster higher uh, levels of student achievement. So Cleopatra is is more so used for entertainment value because uh, let's just face it, a lot of uh, education books mm -hmm. uh, they're boring. <laughs> and, yes, they and, are. and 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 uh, <laughs> I can attest to that. And a lot of teachers uh, don't read, do a lot of reading unless they they have to. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're in graduate school or maybe they're doing something to uh, as part of some sort of recertification piece. Mm -hmm. But the Cleopatra Teacher Rules is is a book that combines history, uh, this controversial figure from antiquity, antiquity uh, mixed with effective teaching practices. And it's a book that you can read from cover to cover, from start to finish. And it will not only entertain you, but it will also enlighten you on how to improve your teaching practices. Wow. Love it. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's funny because you had mentioned, you know, talking about uh, – how important it is with your experiences and ultimately this book will help you uh, become a better teacher. Yes. And obviously Cleopatra is there, you know, as, as, a, as a key connection. But, you know, I know you have a lot of experience in the education field and I really want to get into, you know, specifically how have your professional experiences, your personal professional experiences mm -hmm. really helped uh, when you wrote this book. And can you kind of speak on that? Well, I think uh, all of my experiences um, in some way, shape or form influence my thinking when I'm writing all of my books. Mm -hmm. um, it's no secret that I, um, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. I attended uh, public schools throughout my um, you know, school age career. Mm -hmm. And I, after graduating, high, um, uh, graduating from college, I actually came back to my alma mater to teach. And uh, after I left the uh, classroom, I went on to uh, become an assistant principal and then a principal. Um, all of that was done in, you know, what we call an urban school district. OK, mm -hmm. so the experiences that I had as a student, whether good or bad, as a teacher, as a principal, all of that helped to shape my decision making. So, you know, when writing the Cleopatra teacher rules, I, I think back to. 
times when I was in class and I think about some of the problems that teachers may have had. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think back to some of the times where uh, things went well and I was learning a lot. And what and I try to capture those elements. What did those teachers do to make that classroom experience uh, for me beneficial? Mm. What was it about that teacher's delivery, their personality, right. the classroom, the subject matter, the content? Mm -hmm. So all of those elements. Um, and I and I think that, you know, over my career, I've I've learned and I've observed several highly effective teachers. Mm -hmm. I've been around a lot of great individuals who are very passionate about their work and um, making a difference in the lives of students. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways, I think that I, you know, borrow. I'm like a magnet. You know, I borrow and I attract to things that are um, that are, you know, of interest to me. And um, I think I borrow from different people and to, to, to hone my skills and create uh, the type of um, educator that I am today and all of that helps to inform my decision making along with the research that I do because uh, um, you know I spend a lot of time really being um, critical about the the references and sources that I get information from right. and I go through those uh, very meticulously mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that when I have a finished product and I'm delivering the product to um, the reader, that is something that's uh, number one is written um, in in a professional, uh, well organized manner, mm -hmm. but also it's something that's going to make a difference and, and it's going to impact the field. And that's what I think this book, the Cleopatra Teacher Rules, would do because there's not there's no other book on the market like this in 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 the teaching genre in the education field that combines history mm -hmm. with effective teaching practices right. and uh, in in this way in this style in this fashion so I think that you know it's novel but it's it's uh, is, is very unique and it's something I think a lot of teachers will enjoy Wow. Well, <clears throat> um, you know you, you had mentioned you know about you know traits and different things that you've learned and experiences and mm -hmm. you know I just want to this next question to me is really for the teachers and, and, and instructional staff that's listening to this and they really want to know what do you think is the most important characteristic that they should have as a teacher or as an instructor you know before even reading this book what, what do you think is really one of the most important characteristics for them right that's a, a very good question and I think that is is basically two important characteristics that all teachers should have mm -hmm. uh, number one Teachers uh, have need the ability to empathize with their students, uh, but not sympathize with them. Mm. <laughs> so what I mean by that is they need to understand the, the circumstances and the plight mm -hmm. and the situations that their students are, are dealing with, you know, from their home background, whether it's, uh, you know, dysfunctional family, whether it's poverty, whether it's students that have uh, extra responsibilities once they get home, they're working, right. whatever the situation is, or maybe that may not be the case, it just be the student uh, was deficient and they didn't get the skills and um, that they needed prior to, you know, coming into your particular classroom. So teachers have to empathize with the, the students, but don't let the personal situations that the students may have affect their ability to teach them and, and that become a stumbling block mm -hmm. for um, not receiving the maximum results that that they could actually achieve with the students and and my second thing would be teachers they have to know how to make the classroom uh, well I should say make the content more interesting mm -hmm. all right because teachers are competing with you know pop culture uh, mm -hmm. iPhones social technology media, social media right yeah. social media mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that are competing for our students time mm -hmm. attention mm -hmm. and and interest so we have to be able to capture their interest capture their attention and then once we capture their attention then we can deliver the content more easily mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's one of the main well, I shouldn't say I think that is one of the main uh, uh, principles of the Cleopatra teacher rules. And in fact, it is part of uh, one of the rules mm -hmm. uh, that teachers must be able to engage students over a prolonged period of time.
Well, you know, you mentioned social media and, and you were talking about what you have to compete. Yes. And this next question goes straight out to that. Um, right now, you know, I always say that, you know, students nowadays are born into search. They were born into Google. Right. They can get everything. They can access everything. Uh, they're also on social media, Twitter. They got everything. And so um, I know especially high school, uh, you know, behaviors can be a challenge for teachers, especially even teachers. before high school, <laughs> elementary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, elementary, right. middle is certainly high. Um, and, you know, I guess for this next question, you know, how do behavior problems, you know, impact instruction and what can teachers really do about it? No, behavior problems, uh, they impact instruction uh, on so many different levels. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they also uh, impact the teacher just personally right. because when there are a lot of behavior problems and the teacher doesn't have a good handle on classroom management mm -hmm. uh, the teacher's morale drops yeah. and stress, feelings of yeah right stress frustrated yes and and their uh, feelings of self-efficacy goes down mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, in terms of how you know student discipline Im impacts instruction over the, the most thing it does it, it wastes a lot of time mm -hmm. and time where teachers can spend on delivering quality instruction they have to stop and deal with a lot of behavior problems and whatnot and and because this is a reality of today's uh, classrooms in, in, in many public schools especially those that are in urban settings mm -hmm. uh, I spend a great deal talking about uh, how teachers can obtain uh, uh, good classroom management uh, in in their classrooms and no matter what setting they're in whether they in uh, uh, urban school setting suburban mm -hmm. uh, private school if they employ the the techniques that I mentioned uh, in the Cleopatra teacher rules they'll be able to apply those techniques in any setting and they will be able to obtain maximum results because uh, one thing that teachers do uh, and and this is something that's wrong uh, in terms of classroom, when you think about classroom management, a lot of teachers try to control the student by being rigid, uh, coming down with more rules, um, every little movement. And, uh, they try to stifle the student's movement and creativity and, and basically uh, they try to form that class where students are basically doing like acting as robots. You know, they're just doing what the teacher says. Uh, no uh, dialogue, no movement in the class and whatnot. So I take an opposite approach and I inform teachers that they need to manage the classroom activities instead of trying to manage student behaviors per se. Because if you manage the classroom activities, students and, and couple with good instruction, of course. So the classroom activities is will dictate the student's behavior. Because if they're gay engaged in a well-organized, well-managed classroom lesson, mm -hmm. then it, it alleviates a lot of the classroom management issues. Right. Because students are engaged in the learning process mm -hmm. versus being bored mm -hmm. or sitting around uh, having nothing really meaningful to do. Right. And once that happens, that's when the behavior problems usually start. Gotcha. Well, you know, what do you think then, <clears throat> you know, after hearing that, is one thing that teachers can do to make their classrooms more interesting to students, period. Just one thing that, that teachers can do to make their classrooms more interesting. Well, there's a lot of th a lot of things that would go into that. Mm -hmm. But I would, if I can just have to choose one, I would say that teachers need to find out what are their students' interests. Mm -hmm. Okay? And once they find out their interests, then they try to gear their lessons and activities toward toward students interests and how right. students learn because if you find out that you have some students that are uh, interested in physical activity mm -hmm. okay that may mean that they are kinesthetic learners oh, then you okay. may have some students that are good with using their hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and working hands-on they may be tactile learners right, right. then you have students that like to talk a lot mm -hmm. and and a lot of teachers view that as a classroom management behavior problem yeah. but those students may be interpersonal social learners. Mm. So if you know these things about your students, mm -hmm. and then it gives you a different perspective on how to tackle their uh, academic deficiencies, mm -hmm. and also deliver the content in a way that's more in line with how students learn versus how teachers just want to teach. Because the goal of teaching is to make sure that students learn the content. It's about the students, not about how 
I feel and how I want to teach as the teacher, mm -hmm. because how I my teaching style, if it's just my style and it doesn't and it's not connected to the students, mm -hmm. then there, I'm not going to get any good results. Right. So I should have my teaching style that's connected to ways that students learn. So if I know how my students learn, I can gear my lessons so that the information is more interesting to them, mm -hmm. is more in tune with their learning style, right. and then therefore the information will, uh, they will retain the information longer. And that's the key um, important thing for students is that ultimately they retain uh, the classroom as a fun environment. That's right. And uh, you get the most out of them. Uh, so we're uh, coming up here on a break, uh, running out of time. However, when we return on The Educators here on WMDN, we'll have more with Dr. Sean B. Israel and the Cleopatra Teacher Rules.